Right, mine is um, 14, because there's a winger in there already, Nico Matawalu, the Fijian. Um, anyway, this guy is a special man, and he would be perfect for a touring squad. Um, my story, Christmas story for him, is he when he first got here, which would have been nine years ago, maybe, um, and he was he was fresh, fresh as they come, and he arrived in Glasgow with his bully shirt, his sulu, you know, the little the little skirt thing they wear, and a pair of leather leather like Birkenstock type things, which weren't Birkenstocks, but. That's pretty much all he turned up with. Anyway, he had no family. So I said to him, listen, Neeks, you can come back with me down to London for Christmas. So I took him back down to London. And the first thing I did was landed. My old man picked us up. I'll try and cut it short because it's quite a long one. But we've um, I've got back to my old man's, got him in there, dropped him off. Anyway, I'm going back to where my wife was staying with the kids at this time. So I've headed back over to, to her mum's house and left Nico with my old man. I said, listen, look after him. I'll come and pick him up in the morning. So it's Christmas Eve. Nico has, my old man's phoned me probably, I'd say one, half one in the morning. And he's phoned me saying, you absolute wanker. And I was like, oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? He said, you know exactly what's wrong. He said, you know exactly what you've done. You've left him here on purpose. I know you have. He said, what is wrong with this guy? And I was like, what do you mean? And I'd known Nico for, for a year or so. I hadn't been on the piss with him too much. Anyway, he decided to, like my old man can drink as well. Like my old man can seriously drink. And they'd, they'd started on the gin. He said he'd done a whole bottle of gin, a whole bottle of Deserano. And he was tearing into the whiskey at like half one Christmas day, effectively now. And my old man's like, he just won't go to sleep. He won't stop drinking. He's like, what? And so I get on the phone to Nico. I'm like, Nico, you've got to go to bed, mate. Go to bed. I can't pick you up in the morning. Anyway, turn up the next morning, Christmas Day, we are picking him up, me and my wife, and we're taking him to Walton-on-Thames to her auntie's house. And her auntie won't mind me saying this, quite posh people, this million pound house up in Walton-on-Thames. I've, I've turned up to pick Nick up, he is absolutely steaming drunk, still like bloodshot eyes. This little Fijian that is fresh off the island. So I'm like, Nick, you all right? Yeah, yeah, come on. Anyway, we get there. Walking on Thames, walk in, he does his normal things. He's giving everyone the hug and the kisses straight into the beers. We've sat down for Christmas dinner and he's he sat at the... Oh, before that, we've given him his presents. Like you said earlier, Dills, give him a set of gloves straight on. Oh, lovely. He's got a real high-pitched voice, bless him. Scarf, scarf goes on. Terry's chocolate orange, breaks it open. Everyone sat there opening the presents, put them next to it. He's eating, he's eating the whole cho- Terry's chocolate orange in one go. Bottle of Malibu, opens it up, starts swigging out the bottle. He's got a woolly hat, gloves, scarf, eating this chocolate orange, drinking. And this is like 11 o'clock in the morning, steaming. Anyway, her, all, obviously all her family are like, what is going on here? What is going on? We've sat down at this beautiful, big, long table for Christmas dinner. And uh, Bex's auntie's pulling the turkey out of the oven. This massive turkey out of the oven. I swear to God, people don't think this is true. That's why it would have been good to get Nika on it. And he would have confirmed this. They pulled the turkey out of the oven. And as they're pulling it out, I swear to God, he is trying to pull the wing off of the turkey. He's there pulling at it. I want the wing. I want the wing. It's... <laughs> <laughs> and Bex is like, he's like shooting him away. Get off. Get off. I'm like, Nick, what are you doing? I want the wing. I want the wing. I'm like, Nick, mate, you've got to sit down. So he sits down. He's, I swear to God, he's got a plate full of food like that with this massive turkey wing on top. Like a Cheshire cat sat at the head of the table and everyone sort of like said grace and he's done his Fijian grace like for everyone. Oh, lovely, lovely. In he goes, hands in there, just gets stuck in, like chewing at the bones. I'm sat at the other end of the table, like dying, like crying my eyes out. This is priceless. Anyway, he, he devours this meal. Everyone's still like sort of eating away nicely, quite posh and proper. He's just got up and Bex just looked at me and she's like, what's he doing now? I was like, just leave him. Let him be, bless him. He's gone over to the sink. It's one of these lovely open plan kitchens. He's turned the taps on and he's gone for the old surgical wash in the, in the sink. He's gone for the wash of the face and then he's gone for the cup, the water. And he's drinking at his hands out of the sink. <laughs> And all the Bex's family are just looking like, what is going on? And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't keep it together. I've lost it. He's drinking out of the sink. 
he's not just come back and sat at the table. He's walked straight past the table, sat on the sofa just, just by the way there, opened his bottle of Malibu, and boom, just starts swigging at it. Swigs this bottle away, swigs this bottle of Malibu away, lies back and falls asleep. And that was him. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm in awe of this guy. I'm like, this is amazing. Absolutely no care. And it was only after that he told me, in Fiji, they don't sleep from Christmas to New Year's. They just have like catnaps. He said they almost just catnap and they just part like celebrate for that full whatever seven days or six days it is. And that was the start of it. And I remember taking him back to Glasgow the day after. And it was the first training session he's ever missed. And Gregor Townsend was like, what, what happened to Nico? What have you done to him? And he's still like bloodshot eyes, completely hung over, couldn't train. And that's, <laughs> that's my first Christmas with Nico Matawalu. <laughs> And your last probably, was it? Oh, no, we've had, we've had him plenty, plenty more times. I somehow adopt the Fijians. I don't know how it happens. But I end up going to church with them at Christmas and Easter and, and taking the kids with us. So that was just one of the times. But, oh, what a man. So to have that man on that tour, he, he would be something special. All right. Oh, God, I'd say he'd get everyone into a lot of trouble if he came on this, on this tour. Well, no, it sounds oh. like a good one. Will you get him on the podcast for us? One hundred percent. Do that impression one more time, please. I want the wing. I want yeah. the wing. I want the wing. <laughs> you wait till you hear him. He's hilarious. It, I've been in Nando's with him when he first got here, and people sat in, in Glasgow of all places, sat having in Nando's. Nico goes over the baby, kisses the baby on the head, holds the baby by the head, kisses the baby on the head. Love you, yeah, look your baby, lovely. <laughs> I'm not like, Nico. You can't do that, mate. What are you doing? Oh, don't be stupid. Lovely. I'm not like, Nico, mate. You can't just kiss random people's babies. He's, he's like at another level. He's the most, honestly, one of the most amazing people I've ever met. And he is hilarious. We'll get him on here, but he's a typical Fijian. You put the camera on him, pretends he can't speak English. <laughs> Starts thanking God and that's about it. 